this lecture, we're going to show the calculation of a 3D frame of beams. So in the previous chapter, we talked about a truss elements. In this chapter, we're going to talk about a beam elements, and we're going to show what is the difference between the beam and truss elements. So beam element is also 1D element, but beam elements can carry end loads, shear forces, and torsion, while the truss elements can only carry end loads. The cross section of the object treated as a beam can be constant or can be tapered. While we had with the truss element, when you have an object and we treat that object as a truss element, the cross section can be only constant. Some examples, we have some constructions, as we see shaft, legs, coupling links, pipe-like assemblies, and so on. We can create an object that will be treated as a beam element by using boss extrude, loft, weldments. As well, the ratio of the length and the depth of your cross section has to be bigger than 10. Now let's talk about analysis setup. So when we create a mesh, we can have arbitrary numbers of elements per body, and we can increase those numbers of elements and we can decrease. While with truss elements, we had only one element per body. As well, joints can be rigid or hinged. While with truss elements, we only have rigid joints. Constraints can be only at joints, as well as with the truss elements. And the loads can be applied at the joints, can be applied at defined points, points that we define, and loads can be distributed along section. While with the truss elements, we can only have loads at joints. So now let's make a quick summary, beam versus truss. So as we said, the ratio between the length and the depth has to be bigger than 10, and then we can treat that object as a beam. Cross section at a beam can be constant or tapered, while with the truss, the cross section can be only constant. Beam elements can resist to axial, bending, and torsional loads, while the truss elements can only resist to axial loads. As well, when you treat object as a beam, we can apply loads at joints, points, and we can distribute load along section, while when you treat object as a truss, we can only apply loads at joints. Regarding the mesh, with the beam elements, we can create arbitrary elements per body, and we can use apply mesh control. While we have a truss, then we only have one element per body. As well, when you have a beam element, then every joint at the beginning and end of the element can be controlled. With the trusses, we can control joints. So we can make a joint hinged, rigid, and so on. And we will show that on the real example. And now we're going to show in the quick example the difference between beam and truss. So we have this model, and this model consists of three solid bodies, as we can see. Bus extrude 1, 2, and 3. The first one is tapered. The second one is long with a constant cross section. And the third one is short with a constant cross section. And now we're going to try to make analysis of this body. And we're going to see how will SOLIDWORKS by default treat those bodies. So let's go to SOLIDWORKS add-ins and let's turn on SOLIDWORKS simulation. Let's go to simulation tab and let's choose new study. So we go with static study and OK. Now let's open this beam versus truss. Now here we have solid body 1, 2 and 3. So we can right click on this solid body 1. And here we have option treat as beam. Let's choose this. Now we can see the icon is changed. Let's right click again. And here we have an option treat as solid. But let's go with edit definition. And here we can choose beam or truss. So we can treat this part, this body, as a beam or as a truss. And now it's as a beam because we choose beam. We can also go with truss. So we can click on truss and let's click OK. Now we can see that the icon is changed. So this body will be treated as a truss. If we want to treat this body as a beam, we can go to edit definition again, and we can choose a beam here. Now let's go with beam and let's click OK. The second body that we have here, the short one, let's right click, let's go treat as beam. And now we can see here that we have a warning here. It says the body is too short to be considered as a beam because we can see the ratio is less than 10 and that's what we said before so if we have the ratio of the length and the depth less than 10 
then the body has to be treated as a truss. It can be treated as a beam. So we can go right click. Let's go edit definition. And so here we have a beam and truss. Let's go with truss. Let's click OK. Now let's go to the solid body tree. This one, this tapered one. Let's right click and let's treat as beam. Like this. Now let's go right click, edit definition. And the only option that we have here is a beam, not a truss. Because as we said, tapered body can be only treated as a beam, not as a truss. And that's why this option, treat as truss, we don't have here. So we have to go with beam or we can go with treat as solid. But now as we see at the beginning, SolidWorks, all three bodies treated as solid bodies. And now we change. Now with this one, we treat as beam, this one as truss, and this one as beam. Now let's go to joint group here, right click, edit. Let's select here, select this one, this one, and let's calculate all the joints that we have. So at the beginning of each body and the end, we have a joint here, 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 and here. And now let's click OK. And now let's go to mesh. Let's create a mesh. Now let's see what we got here. So this one, we treat it as a truss. And truss only has one element per body, as we see, only one element. This one, we treat it as a beam, and we can see that it has some arbitrary elements per body. As well, this one, we also treat it as a beam, and also we can see that it has arbitrary elements per body. As well, as we can see that our meshed members are displayed as cylinders. And always, when you treat object as a beam or as a truss, when they are meshed, they are displayed as cylinders. And this is just a simple example to be more clear what is the difference when you treat body as a beam or as a truss. In this lecture, we're going to do the static analysis of the same model that we did in the previous chapter. But this time, we're going to treat this model as a beam. So let's go to simulation and let's go with new study. Let's go with static study and let's put a name here, beam. Let's click OK. Now in the first step, we have to define the material. So let's go to truss, right click and apply material to all bodies. And we're going to go with aluminum alloy, 1060. And let's click apply and close. Now let's open this truss here, cut list this tube and this tube. And now we have to treat those bodies as beams. So let's go right click on the first one, this one. And here we have an option treat as solid. And this is not what we want. So now let's go to edit definition. And here we have a type beam. And this is what we want. Here we have end one connection and end two connection. If we choose beam, then we can control the connection at each end of every element. So we can control the transfer of forces and moments at each end. Those forces and moments at those ends can be set to zero. So in general, we can restrain each end of the beam. Here we have options, rigid, hinge, slide, manual. If we choose rigid, then we have a full transfer of the forces and moments. If we go with hinge, then end can rotate freely and we can transfer moments, only forces. If we go with slide, then we can transfer forces. And here we have manual as well. If we choose manual, then user can specify for the moment of force if it will be zero or not. In our cases, we're going to choose rigid for end one connection and we're going to choose rigid for the end two connection. Here we have section properties. Let's open this. Here we can override the torsional constant the distance for maximum shear stress. And this is the distance from the center of the section to the point of the maximum torsional shear. And it depends on the cross section. And here we have a shear factor. Shear factor we use for a stress calculation. And this is the ratio of the effective area under shear and beams cross section area. Now we're going to choose everything as it is and let's click OK. So all elements we want to treat as beams. And for all elements, we want to choose rigid connection and ends. So you can right click on the second one, edit definition, and we have rigid, rigid and beam. And by the default, we have the same for those two. In the next step, we have to recalculate the joints. So when we calculate the joints, the program creates a node 
at each center of the cross section of each joint member. So let's go to joint group. Let's go edit. And here we see that here we have a two joint. And this is not what we want. So we're going to choose here select and we're going to unselect this one and we're going to select again this one and let's click calculate. And now we have only one joint here and this joint is the intersection of those four elements. And here we have a joint at each free end. And now let's click OK. Let's go with OK. And now we have to define fixture. And the fixture will be applied at the free end of each structural member. And we're going to use those joints that we have calculated. So let's go to fixture, fixed geometry, and let's choose those four joints. Now let's click OK. In the next step, we have to define loads. We're going to have three different loads. We're going to have gravity, torque, and non-uniform load. So first, let's go with gravity. Right click, gravity. We have top plane, and let's click just OK. And this is our gravity. Now let's go right click. Let's go with torque. Here, let's choose a joints. And let's choose this joint here. Now let's go here to our moment. And let's go with 80 newton meters. Let's go with reverse direction. Let's click OK. OK, we have a problem. We have to select the reference plane. OK, let's select here. And let's choose top plane. Like this. And now let's click OK. And the third load will be non-uniform load. So let's right click here. Let's go to force. So this non-uniform load will be applied to the beam. So here we're going to choose beam and we're going to choose this beam here like this. And now let's go with non-uniform distribution. Let's check this. Let's go down. And here we have three options. We can go with triangular distribution. We can go with parabolic and we can go with elliptical. We're going to go with parabolic distribution. And here we can choose total load distribution, center load and table driven load distribution. Total load distribution distributes the total force moment along the length of the beam. There are no loads applied at the ends of the beam. If we go with centered load distribution, then we have force moment at the center of the beam and the loads decrease on each side of the center according to the selected triangular, parabolic or elliptical distribution, in our case with parabolic distribution. And the last we have table driven load distribution. It distributes the force values at a specific location along the length of the beam. The location, that location can be specified as a percentage or as a distance from the end of the beam. But we're going to go with total load distribution. Now let's go here and let's now select a plane for direction. And let's go with front plane. Now let's choose here our force normal to plane. And this will be 200 newtons, like this. And let's click OK. And this is our first load distribution. Now we have to create a second non-uniform load. Let's go to our external loads, force. Let's go here with beam and let's choose this one. Let's select the plane for direction. Let's go with front. Let's go with non-uniform and let's go here with parabolic. And here we have our force 200, like this. And let's click OK. And now we have defined our loads. And in the last step, we have to create a mesh. So the number of the elements will be defined automatically, but we can also change them. We can also use apply mesh control. So let's go here to the mesh, right click, and let's create a mesh. Like this. And now we see that the meshed members are displayed as a hollow cylinders. As well, we can apply mesh control. So let's go right click, apply mesh control, and we can control our mesh by number of elements or by changing the element size. So let's choose this element. Let's go here, element size, and let's go with three millimeters like this. And let's click OK. And now we don't see any changes because we have to go here, right click and create a mesh again. And now we can see the changes. Here we have much more elements than here, here and here. And now we are ready to start with our analysis. 
but we're gonna delete this apply mesh control right click and delete yes and let's create a mesh again let's go to force 2 this one let's go edit definition like this and now let's click OK and now let's run this study and those are our results here we have upper bound axial and bending stress let's go right click let's go edit definition let's check this keep visible and let's change here to axial let's click OK and now we can see the axial stresses we can change here let's go to torsional and now we have torsional stresses also let's go with shear in direction one and those are results and we can also choose upper bound bending in direction one and two like this let's go out let's go to results right click we can also list beam forces let's go with forces okay and here we have for each element at the end one and two axial forces shear forces moment one and moment two and torque we can also save this now let's close let's go to results and we can show our reaction forces so let's choose those four joints like this and let's go with update and now here we have our reaction forces and reaction moments so here we have the force in direction x y z resultant force and here we have components of our moment and resultant moment let's click ok let's right click and let's define beam diagram so we can display here we can go with axial force shear force moment and torque let's check this keep visible and let's go with shear force let's click ok and those are our shear force diagrams in direction one we can go moment about direction two and now we have those diagrams we can go to axial forces and now we have those diagrams as you see and we can choose torque and these are torque let's exit now let's go to results right click and let's define factor of safety plot let's click ok and the 1.9 is our minimum factor of safety as well here we have a displacement let's double click on the displacement like this let's right click let's go edit definition let's check this keep visible so we can show displacement in the x direction we can go to y z direction and we can go with resultant displacement as well let's exit let's go to stresses double click let's go to plot tools let's go with probe and now here we can choose the element of which we want to show the stress we can choose this one we can choose this element we can go to this element here like this this one here and here we have the element id location and the value of the stress so we can also create here a plot you know here we have a stress and here we have the element id and this is how you can present the results of a 3d frame of beams